Recently, we had an interview with none other than Hoag Law, and one of the more interesting parts was when he talked about what the FTC's plan actually is and why the case against Microsoft might be about something bigger, something that they want to change within the broader industry. So could the FTC case go to court? Yes, it actually could. And Hoag Law explains why. Let's take a look at the interview right now. Do you think the industry is going to see changes given all this new interest in the gaming sector? And is that good or bad? Uh, there's a lot of talk about how third parties being exclusives are negative, and I'm starting to wonder, is this actually going to have a longer term impact on the industry? Because now Washington's very interested in what's going on in the gaming market. Yeah, I think if you go back into my playlist on this, you'll hear me refer to uh, the regulatory look here as the eye of Sauron. So when Sony starts really arguing for their point with the FTC, I, one of the questions I raise is, you don't really want this level of heat on the video game industry because everything under a microscope is always going to be reevaluated by regulators or other authorities. So the answer to that is, I don't know long term, but I think it's more likely than it was before all this started. And I think that's from Sony and Microsoft clashing so strongly. Anytime you see this kind of action and you wind up with these numbers like 98% or 90% or even a two-party market is a little bit scary or fraught for regulators in general, I think you're going to wind up inviting them into your door. And yeah, maybe you get another look at should exclusives on marketing agreements be allowed at all? Uh, personally, my position is that they are not in a competitive and that they are the way that you compete at the console level with downstream uh, products, right? So I want Sony and the PlayStation line and Microsoft, the Xbox line to go get exclusives to fight with each other because I think that that level of console fighting is good for, for competition. It's good for consumers long term. We want a strong Sony. We want a strong Microsoft and we want them to clash. We want them to fight for our attention. Mm -hmm. But you could easily spin that around the other way and say, well, if somebody succeeds too much like Sony or somebody else, that those are restraints of trade. And one of the big problems we have in American antitrust, and this is really global, is that the antitrust laws are very, very broad. So the Sherman Antitrust Act says it's illegal to have a restraint of trade. But we know that that's not actually true, right? You can sign an employment agreement that says, I'm not going to work for your competitor at the same time that you're paying me. You can sign all sorts of things that are technically restraints, but those are deemed to be okay restraints. We need that to function as an, econo as an economy and a society. Where we get into problems is that the court then has to interpret it for every new industry and every new age. Say what we really are against are anti-competitive, unfair restraints of trade. And what does that look like? Is an exclusive marketing agreement that says we're the only ones that are going to be able to get beta access to Resident Evil 4, whatever it might be. Is that something that is illegal? Is it anti-competitive to the extent that it forces out Microsoft and Nintendo? I would argue no, but when you have people re-looking at these things and people that are already kind of anti-technology company, you could easily have that question go the other direction and then suddenly a whole business model is out the window, right? If Sony's looking at this realistically, one of their big fears that keeps them awake at night is that everything that they've done to build their brand in the last 20 years could be looked at as something that they're not allowed to do anymore. Do I think that's likely? No, but I don't think that they should be just saying that that's impossible with this level of interest in their operations in the video game industry overall yeah this whole letter to the the jftc to me i'm just like oh things are going to happen like this is the start of a deeper look at the industry so i i find your perspective really interesting uh and i didn't know you said that back when the whole thing started like hey maybe you don't want to stir up the hornet's nest too much because you know now washington's kind of looking for their next next success story right and potentially well, it could be leveling the playing field in a way that sony does not like that was one of the areas where i was just most surprised with sony's adamance right by the time they flip over to this deal cannot be allowed if the video game industry is to survive I'm like well you're you're biting off a lot there and sony went all in on that now i think some of that is coming back on them but Overall, I just think you don't want, if you're Sony, if you are the market leader, you don't want a high level of regulatory scrutiny on your operations. And I think to some extent that is going to happen. But I don't know what the appetite is for that. We're obviously in a very interesting economy right now. And there's a lot of things that are going to demand legislature's focuses here and abroad. 
So Sony might be hoping that they're just not that interesting over the long term. But I do think if I'm Sony, I'm sitting there a little bit worried that the entire government apparatus might decide that the way they operate is wrong. On that note, do you think that the FTC case is going to go through? There's a lot of requests for documents from Microsoft. There's a lot of requests for documents from Sony now. I personally, as a to somebody that's been creating content about this, I cannot wait to see those documents come to light. But I do think the case will be dropped, and I'd be curious to hear what you think. Do you think the case goes through, or is there something larger at play here? And I'll talk about that in a second. So again, if you have watched any of my coverage of this, I was surprised to see them bring the case because it's so yeah. weak in, in historical kind of precedence. But that being said, the same reason that it's weird to bring when it's weak means that it isn't obvious that they drop it when it's just a little bit weaker, right? So if the FTC continues on without the CMA and the European Commission backing them up, it wouldn't surprise me. But it also wouldn't surprise me to say, hey, we're reconsidering and this is going to be a bad loss for us. So I think overall, what we're looking at is a Federal Trade Commission that's very difficult to predict because they have exhibited a certain kind of desire to bring cases, whether or not they have the strength to win them in federal court or not. So I, I agree with everybody that has said, hey, when the CMA drops this, as it looks like they might, or when the European Commission comes out on Microsoft's side of this, does the FTC just say, you know what? We don't have a case. We're not bringing it anymore. We don't want to look bad. I think ordinarily, if you looked at this historically, you would say, yes, in general, they would reflect on it and say, this isn't worth our time. But this FTC, this current body in in American jurisprudence, I think, might just decide, let's bring it and lose. Even if we lose, we can say the laws aren't sufficient to handle what they need to be. And so we're going to use that as marketing platform for the next thing we want to do. So I can see it both ways. If I were in the Federal Trade Commission right now, if I were in charge, I would be dropping this. I wouldn't have brought it in the first place, but I'm not. I know much to yeah. much to people's happiness sometimes, <laughs> but I'm not the head of the Federal Trade Commission. And so it wouldn't surprise me either direction on this. Now, in terms of the documents, I can totally understand wanting to see some information leaked out as, as happened with respect to Epic and Apple. Uh, but I think chances are, because this is an internal administrative action, they'd be a little bit better at controlling their information flow anyway. So I think we'd probably both get cross-eyed from the level of redactions and snips out of the information that we really want to see from those documents. So I don't think huge amounts of value are lost with the FTC dropping their case. I do think it's interesting to see both Sony and Microsoft kind of um, demure at the requests that are being made on the documents. That's been fun to watch because they're, they're, they're fighting each other in what I consider a normal discovery process, which is you ask for the moon, the other party refuses, you try to look a little bit more considerate, and then ultimately you complain to the parents, the court, when they don't give you the documents that you want. And that happened both directions. Yeah. So I think both Microsoft and Sony are doing what I would expect in a litigation context. So I don't really hold either of them particularly uh, in anger on what they've been operating on there, but I'm a lawyer, so I've, I've seen these kind of fights before. Ultimately, I think the FTC is not going to win its case, so I'm not that worried about it, but I am interested in seeing whether Microsoft would close over it, which is, as I described in my video, a phrase that I use to explain what happens when a condition isn't met in an agreement. So right now we have a merger agreement that's been signed between Microsoft and Activision, right? And in that merger agreement, there are a number of conditions to closing. That's why all the headlines from a year ago that say Microsoft has purchased Activision are wrong. Yeah. So that doesn't happen until you actually close the deal. <laughs> <clears throat> but in those conditions of closing, there will be things like there isn't a pending litigation. All the regulators have given their approval or otherwise the time period has passed where they can deny approval, as is the case in the United States because the FTC and the DOJ don't give approval for deals. So that would be a condition of closing with a, net, with a pending FTC action set for August if it's not dropped. Microsoft wouldn't have to close, but the parties can decide to close anyway. They can close yeah. over a lack of a met condition. And Microsoft has indicated to the FTC that they will do that. But as I've said on my side of the internet, one thing you have to keep in mind when you're looking at a litigation, as is the case here, is that you have a lot of incentives to say things, maybe not for their truth value, but to move parties in various directions. And so it's very useful for Microsoft to say, we're going to close regardless of what you do, FTC, to encourage the FTC to go fast, right? To, to get their stuff done, to answer discovery requests and to keep moving forward. 
so that the FTC is worried that if the European Union and the United Kingdom approve the deal, that they'll just move through with it and the FTC would have to go and try to seek a federal injunction. So will Microsoft ultimately do that? I don't know. Whether they'll close over this deal or not, I really can't say because I know if I, I'm in charge of Microsoft, which again, many many of you can be very happy I'm not, I would probably not close over a pending FTC action because I'd be concerned about the cost and logistics value of the FTC actually ultimately winning and deciding that I have to divest of what I just purchased. So I wouldn't close over that. I think in most cases, a corporation wouldn't close over a regulator suing them to stop their deal. But Microsoft has indicated that they will, so we can't just ignore that. Microsoft's also nearing their $3 billion deadline, which is the max amount for the deal falling apart, basically, right? That they would have to pay Activision. Um, that's like in April, right? So I, I don't think Microsoft's going to drop this to you. Like they're already at $2.5 billion. What's another 500 million at this point? Yeah, I think the exit ramps were really, once this happens from the FTC at the end of last year, the, the, one of the question marks I had is, is the FTC trying to force them off at the $2 billion level, which I think was the middle of January? Mm -hmm. Once right. they pass that, and there's no indication that they're going to do any of that, I, I don't think that the FTC can force them out of the deal. So Microsoft, I don't see them exiting in the April deadline. I think they're just going to move forward. And I, every indication they've given to us in the public is that they're going to close regardless of the status of the FTC action. I don't know how realistic that is or not, but it certainly suggests that they want us to believe they don't think the FTC has a leg to stand on. Um, I'm not sure if you're uh, familiar with it, but there is a bill that I've seen some people talking about, S3847, 3847 prohibiting anti-competitive mergers act of 2022 uh basically the five, dollar one? the five billion dollar mergers wouldn't be allowed to happen so sony wouldn't be able to acquire bungie uh activision wouldn't be able to be acquired by microsoft it's basically any deal over five billion is that the thing that you think the ftc is trying to work towards building the platform for I think the FTC would love that. I think that's part of, if you look at Lena Khan's background, she wrote a paper suggesting that a certain size of merger wouldn't, shouldn't be allowed, I think in the context of Amazon, if I'm remembering that correctly. But yeah, I think that's something that they're invested in long term. I don't think this deal should turn on that. And ultimately, I don't know that it would pass muster in the court system to just have a number out there that says this is somehow something that shouldn't be allowed. That's not me, again, not on the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. But those are the questions that you'd have to ask long term. Could could Congress just put a number out there and say you can't combine at this level? Certainly, that would lower the value of a lot of assets of a lot of multi-billion dollar corporations immediately. Whether that happens is going to be up to the legislature. In my opinion, I think that the FTC would love to see that kind of power, but I don't know that they'll ultimately get it. And I don't know that this helps their case. Thanks for watching that clip. If you like the interview with Hogla, Hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, hit the like on the video so it gets shared around. I do appreciate you watching. Thank you so much to the members for supporting. I really appreciate you. You have the whole video. No ads for members. Of course, if you don't want to watch ads on the videos, click that join button and you get the same videos, no ads, and you support the channel. Thank you so much for doing so. I'm going to get out of here. I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now, everybody. If you want to see the full thing, you can watch it right now, right here. All right. Bye, everybody.